Hey guys, so today we're going to be going over the few changes to Rahu's job plus as they are pretty nice changes in all honesty and have really put Rahu back up there as a great unit to use. Not that Rahu was ever a bad unit to use, it's just now she's even better. So before we get that, Rahu did recently get her OG skin for anyone who was interested in looking. And as you can see, it's got some pretty nice detail, and of course the animation is awesome. So, uh, just a quick over, because I've never actually overviewed Rahu before. Uh, here's my Kaig, unless you're interested. Gate 1 for HP. I don't really think the Gate 4 is worth the uh, HP. She's not doing damage, so you don't need any of those uh, Sin modifiers. So I really don't think that wasting two horns and two Sins on Gate 4 is a great idea. And... Honestly, I don't even really think she needs the HP from Gate 2. If you want it, you can go ahead and get it. It's just, in all honesty, in, so, in the maps I generally use her in, she doesn't either doesn't die or I kill her because I need to bring out a sub on like a raid or something. And she's like run out of skill casts or she's run out of jewels to use, in which case she's effectively dead to me because, you know, uh, gathering jewels is, for some of these uh, Chronomancer skills is not that fun as a lot of them do cost a lot to use. Uh, I did raise her gate 5 however because her gate 5 is actually great and what it does is it is going to increase the range of her magical momentum or her overclock by 1 and also increase the cast speed to 500 up from 350 which is in all honesty, that's just kind of stupid. I mean, the, she casts it so fast now, it's insane. Uh, there was no change to the height, so you still have to deal with that. However, you'd be surprised at the difference of feeling between 3 and 4 range on that, as it just gives you way more options on how you want to position Rahu, which even makes it easier to run her at a lower HP without suffering consequences. And there are a couple of other things we can do to patch up that HP, such that you don't need to waste two sins on her gate too. So as for Nensos, you will be running Bolts Nenso on her. There is no other Nenso to run on her. There is only Bolts. And I've been over this a thousand times, and I'll say it one more time. It's because of that buff vision ability, the 60 jewel one that's going to buff your weapon modifiers by 50 for like three turns, and your HP by 50% for three turns. It is an insanely good vision ability, and it's made even better by the fact that Rahu can get an additional cast on it, so she can cast it twice. Uh, other options, you could always run Regenerator on her instead. That means that she won't need to get regen armor, giving you even better survivability. Clock resist to resist ki uh, all kinds of count manipulation. You know, th there's a plenty of different things you can run on her. She's a great support unit. The only thing that you will always take is obviously your um, cast time reduction passive. You always take that. I need to raise Magical Barrier again too because she recently got her um, Bishop JE and I haven't re-raised that yet. That is normally my uh, passive of choice as the other two are extremely situational in use. Uh, as for what you should run, you should obviously in almost all circumstances run her as a Chronomancer main with her Chronomancer sub as she benefits greatly from having both of those. However, uh, recently in Japan, some of our auto teams have been setting up Chronomancers with uh, level 1 JEs such as like Enchanter, because Rahu's uh, zero Enchanter is just not that great. It's not a, an elemental Enchanter, so you know, unless you need like Dispel or something, there's no reason really to raise this. And the reason you would do this is so that way your uh, Chronomancer is less it's not going to cast overclock because the way the chronomancer ai works is it's going to cast overclock it is then going to try to quicken all of your units and then it's going to cast delay on the opponent and the whole point of doing this is to cut out the middleman and get her to cast delay more quickly on an auto setting um <clears throat> so other than that nothing much else has really changed about rahu now as for the gear, we're just going to quick go down a list of useful gear to have on her, including uh, Japanese gear that you obviously do not have yet in Global. So, uh, the first piece of gear, you, you actually probably have Strie's Nenso by now. It's just a three-star Nenso. It's nothing great, but it does have this nice rabbit doll uh, VCR, 
and it gives 32 your max jewels. Remember, Rahu's a Chronomancer, so she starts with her max jewels, which means max jewels is a great stat to have on a Chronomancer. It's also going to come with plus one jump, making her more easily able to navigate maps. This is especially important as uh, Quicken and Magical Momentum don't have very good height um to the makes it very difficult to use on like really hilly terrain having the extra jump is going to let rahu work her way around the map easier and get you those clock ups and those uh quickens a whole lot more much less painful way uh, it's also going to have seven speed and that's going to be her main speed item uh rahu can just clock herself up she doesn't really need a 10 speed item i think the rabbit doll is good enough and i almost always run it on her uh, another thing I like to run is the snowman hat, because this get, lets uh, Rahu act as a jewel donator, giving her the ability to give jewels to a unit if they just need a little bit more to cast a skill. Uh, this can save yourself a turn and can be even better than quickening a unit, as not having to gather jewels for one turn has effectively saved you one turn. Um, you don't have to run this, there are plenty of other great options, however I do think this is a very powerful option on Rahu. Uh, another thing you might want to consider is I believe the snowman top hat in global from the Christmas event in the global exclusive gear can also do the same thing, uh, but it can do it in an AOE, which is really, really nuts. So if you do have access to that piece of gear in global, I think that is also an extremely strong option. Um, this is also going to, the regular snowman hat is also going to have uh, plus 20 to your max jewels, which is once again a great stat to have in case you don't have the bunny VCR. So do keep that in mind. Um, moving on, I don't really think there are any great staves to use on her, to be honest at this point, at least in global. However, in Japan, we do have a good option. Um, I don't even know what this staff is called, but it does come with 20 healing on it which means that Rahu is if she's running regenerator regenerator is going to be more effective or if she's running regen armor the regen armor will be more effective but that's not really the reason that we run this piece of gear it's actually because when your HP drops below uh, 50% it is going to increase your or um, decrease your cast time ratio which is going to make you cast um, spells even faster why this is great? Well, if Rahu gets dropped down and she's not running regen, it just means that she's going to cast her skills significantly faster. Rahu already is pretty quick and can already have uh, cast time reduction. So adding even more cast time reduction, it's like doubling your cast time reduction passive. What more could you possibly want from a piece of gear other than being able to do that from 100% HP? Um, however, it is a nice trade-off. It's a good piece of gear to have. It is Japan only for now. Uh, I really don't think any other staff is a great idea. None of them really can do what that does. Um, for HP gear, you do have access to the um, uh, Retsius. That's his name. <laughs> the Retsius uh, Scarf, which is 500 HP. It's just a good HP item to keep on hand that isn't going to take up one of your regen armors or one of your Tamamo VCRs on a map. Uh, just something to keep in mind any kind of hp gear is going to do just make sure you do run any piece of hp gear uh moving on to some other things the raid pouch is obviously always going to be an option for every unit in japan as 40 jewel gain is impossible to beat i can't even describe how broken 40 jewel gain is it's so broken is it's hard to comprehend what it does to units you like gain multiple turns throughout a battle just by using this piece of gear alone it is so broken it is it's insanely good um also the this is another piece of rate gear and what this rate gear does is it's going to give you 70 resist to count manipulation but it's going to absolutely gimp your damage however it will also give you i believe 25 percent hp boost in battle and it'll gimp your damage. So this is a pure support item. It is designed to make it so that way the unit that uses it cannot attack effectively, reducing your magic modifier by 50 and further reducing all of your elemental all damage by 50, if I remember correctly, like just having the damage you do. But the 70 to count manipulation resist is obviously very nice. And the 25% HP is considered a buff. So you can run this piece of gear with a HP piece of, with an HP gear and stack the HP. Altima VCR is a good regen armor. Just It's less HP, but better regen is effectively what it is. 
Uh, is there anything else? Obviously, any kind of uh, damage reduction gear is good on her, especially if she needs to be able to survive a hit or two early in the fight. Um, and other than that, there really aren't a ton of great options for her. Um, I suppose another good option is the third anniversary gear if you have it in Japan, as it gives you three 33% rate heals that you can use on a single target. It's actually a really nice piece of gear to have on a support, and it just fits in anywhere that you like. Uh, any kind of uh, gear that I might be missing, I don't know if there's any uh, global gear that I'm missing, as I have not uh, been playing that much global as of late. But if there's anything that I'm missing that you think might be good on Rahu that global has as an exclusive, feel free to throw that down in the comments section so that way people can see, and so I can know about it. So I'm just going to hop into a map here real quick with Rahu and just quick show off uh, what she can do. Basically, it's just to show off one, uh, two skills specifically. Uh, who should I run with Rahu? Um, quick spoilers, if you didn't know anything about Mocha and you don't want to get spoiled, because it's, it's obvious, most people know, but I'm just going to run Mocha in this map. And actually, I'll turn the animations on, because I actually haven't seen the animation for Rahu's new skill, because she did get a new skill. We will be going over it. Alright, so here's Rahu in the map. As you can see, I think her uh, OG skin looks a lot better in the map because of the angles and stuff um, than it does like in the character screen. Now, don't forget that her magical momentum is significantly faster now, although I'm not going to cast it as it has not changed otherwise. Just do note that, um, like, you can tell that it's farther away. If you use Rahu a lot, you can tell how much further this feels like, that four spaces, though. So, we're going to start with a quicken. And as you notice, Rahu just clocked herself up, or rather quickened herself. Um, and that is the new effect on her quicken. She is going to be able to quicken herself as well as quicken an ally. Why is this so great? Well, it's the same reason Wonder Cronus is so great. You basically get two clock ups, or two quickens, I mean, in the same turn. And it also means that Rahu is now going to be able to more quickly cast quicken on the rest of your team. Just boosts your tempo through the roof and that's why you use rahu rahu is a tempo generator the, her whole purpose in life is to make your team faster so that way you can get more done in a shorter period of time she doesn't have that many like damage buffs as the only one that she has comes through the bolt and so something that wasn't even necessarily made for her although i suspect it kind of was <laughs> um <clears throat> but yeah she doesn't have any of that she doesn't have any heals really in her kit she is pure tempo generation and moving on to the next skill it's actually on her main and it costs 50 jewels and as you can see it is an aoe and it does not affect rahu and this is a 25 count up aoe so, if you have uh, four units in here that aren't Rahu, you've effectively cast, like, 100 count up, but it goes across your entire team. So, it's possible to force two of your allies' turns quicker than your opponent to get something done. This is actually really freaking good if it's used right, and if it's used improperly, it's going to be lackluster. Um, there isn't going to be that much in between but just in general it will make your team move faster it does not have a cast time so it is instant cast that is a nice little bonus um but yeah that it's super nice um i can't say that i have found great use for it yet but i have only really used rahu in one i don't even really want to call it difficult piece of content because it wasn't i basically had the whole thing solved after like two runs and what the optimal strategy was and the optimal strategy just did not include that skill but um 
I'm sure it will find its use in the future. Uh, normally it would only have two casts, but as Rahu has an extra cast on all of her skills, it does have three. It's super nice. Um, and onto the final skill, it is an AoE blind, but it does a little more than just blind. It is also going to increase the jewel spent rate of the person it afflicts by 100%. So if you had a jewel skill that cost 50 to begin with, it is now going to cost 100, or at least it should. Um, I haven't actually personally tested it on any of my units. Can you even cast this on your own allies? No, you can't. So <clears throat> this looks like it's going to be more centered around PvP. Please feel free to correct me if you think this is going to be absolutely useless in PvP, but if you increase the jewel spent rate of a unit, then they might no longer be able to launch the attacks that they want to launch. It is an AoE, which makes it super nice. Rahu does have an insanely fast cast time. Um, however, the cast speed is only 300, so you do have to take that into account. And the blind hit rate and evasion rate are minus 40%. So do keep that in mind as well. And there you have it. That Those are the changes to Rahu. Nothing else has really changed about her. Obviously, just never forget that you can have access to a nice little jewel gift as well as this AoE buff, which are super nice, and it really rounds her out well as a support. By getting those items to give her the things that her kit can't do, it, 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 it's really super nice to use her as a support now, more than it has ever been. And pretty soon, you guys will be getting Leafa, uh, as she comes out in the Watatsumi Babel 2. And between Leafa and Rahu, you have two monstrous supports especially if you're running a wind missile team and that is because rahu's bolt nenso buff actually will stack with the missile buff that leafa can give to give you like some insane missile mod value over 100 and that's like before leafa's gate 5 i think that with my leafa's gate 5 and my rahu's bolt nenso buff i think i can get a missile mod of 170 through buffs alone on my uh, archer units which is kind of stupid um i i had my seda doing like 75k hits with one of her skills uh using a combination of rahu and leafa as buffing supports as well as just clocking up your entire team with rahu to insane levels um, you can kind of see, I, I messed up, I, I don't think you saw the Seda 75k in the video I posted about the Setsuna Job pl plus uh, Hard Boss manual. But you, you can see the, um, you can see the general uh, idea though about running them together as they will stack and they can buff your uh, Wind Missile units to pretty nutty levels when combined. Anyways guys. Thanks for watching as always, and I will see you next time.